Hi, and welcome to the third video in the UMZ CT Data and Segmentation tutorial series. I'm Xi'an, and today we'll be talking about uploading data onto Morphosource. So as a brief overview, first we have to copy the data from a research drive onto two backup hard drives. Um, the data then needs to be compressed and uploaded onto Cyberduck, and then a batch upload spreadsheet has to be generated containing all the information, um, like the metadata, information about scanning parameters, and finally, all of that is uploaded onto Morphosource. Um, and because this can be a lengthy process, this will be split up into a few different videos. And in this first one, I'll be talking about copying that data over, compressing it, and then putting it onto Cyberduck. And before we begin, I just want to cover a few programs and accounts you'll have to have. So on the computer you're working off of, you'll need Cyberduck, Anaconda Prompt, and Notepad++. You'll also need access to the research drive and a Morphosource account. Um, and you need to have access to the project you want to upload to. You'll also need to ask them for batch uploading permissions. Um, this will let you um, upload a bunch of specimen at once. And once you ask for that, they'll give you a DukeNet ID, which I will bring up later in this video. So first we need to copy the data from the research drive onto the hard drives. So I go to file, the research drive, click on research, go to Cody Thompson's folder and open over transfer. So as you can see, it's organized by the week. Um, each folder uh, contains all the specimen that were scanned within that week. Next, I like to open a new window and then go to the drives, which I will be uploading or copying the data onto. So usually, again, there are two, um, but for this video, there will only be one. Um, I'll be working off of over 8A, and usually when I have the second drive, it will be named over 8B or whatever corresponding number it is. Um, within that drive, I'm going to go to unprocessed. Um, and as you see, there should not be anything in there. And copy the data from the research drive onto that drive just by clicking and dragging. So usually I copy the whole week's worth of specimen, um, but for this video, I'll only be showing um, how to do one. So this process can take between a few minutes to over six hours, um, depending on how many specimen you have. And so um, for this video, we are just going to fast forward through this waiting period. So once everything has been successfully copied over, we can close um, the window with the research drive open. And next we have to compress the TIFF files. So if I open this um, file, you can see the second folder contains all the TIFF files. So this is the folder we need to compress. I'm going to move it to upload. And again, this would be done for all the specimen. So to compress this, we have a code which we can copy. So on this sticky note here, I'm just going to copy this first code. And next, I'm going to open the anaconda prompt here and paste it. Again, this process can take a little bit depending on how many specimen you have. And so we are just going to skip over the waiting period. So once it is finished um, compressing, we have the zip folder here. Um, we need to put this original file back into where it came from. So I'm just going to click and drag it back to unprocessed. Then I'm going to go back to unprocessed and then drag that folder into the original folder it belongs in. And again, you would be doing this manually for every specimen you have. 
All right, going back to that zip folder, we need to rename it. Um, so as you can see, um, this folder usually ends in 01, that underscore 01. And so to get rid of that, again, we can just copy a code to do it for us. So click Control C. And then I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard and right click on Upload. And we can see that we have this open PowerShell window here button and paste the code. All right. And so usually when there are a lot of specimen or usually when there aren't that many specimen, you can just um, rename it manually um, by right clicking and clicking on rename. But again, when there's a lot of specimen, it's just easier to have it do everything for you. All right, so now that it's been renamed, we are going to move this zip folder into this upload folder under Morphosource Batch Convert um, just by clicking and dragging. And next we have to put this onto Cyberduck. So what Cyberduck does is it's a portal that allows you to um, upload specimen onto it and that will automatically put onto Morphosource for you. So, but to do that, we need to open a connection. Oh, looks like I already have something there. Um, sorry, to do that, we had to open a connection and change this to SFTP. And the server is www.morphosource.org. And here's where that DukeNet ID comes in. Um, when you up, um, ask Morphosource for those batch uploading permissions, they'll give you um, a username and you'll set up a password and everything. So this is where you would enter that information. And you click Connect. All right, so once that connection has been made once, um, every time you use Cyberduck, you don't have to reopen that connection. It'll be saved automatically, um, but this is useful to know in case a different connection's open or this, um, this is your first time making that um, connection. So now we are just copying this um, zipped folder into Cyberduck. And again, this can take a few minutes or a few hours. Um, so this quickly becomes a lengthy um, multi-day process. All right, so we are just waiting for this to finish up. And that has been completed. So we can exit out of this. And as you can see, um, we have that zip folder on uh, Cyberduck. So this completes the first um, part of this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at sotsuka at umich.edu.